Hello, hello, hello. I don't know if anybody is out there in YouTube or Facebook land, but I am doing some paper bead rolling tonight and I thought I'd go live. to um, get some company. Sorry, just picking up some strips that fell. Look at this, got strips galore. So I thought maybe I would hop on, see who's on tonight at the last minute and wants to come and join me and say hello. So go ahead if you're on and say hi in the chat. There might be a small delay before I see your comments because I'm on a third party. Hey, Louise. Good to see you. Thanks for coming to hang out. I, I don't know if you noticed in the last, one of the last videos I put up, not the last one, but the one about the pattern paper in April, but there was a different background behind me than normal. So I am reorganizing my studio room here. I don't know, my I'm clogged. Come on. And um, so I am rolling a bunch of beads. I'm going to hang behind me out of pattern paper. All right. Ah, uh, we're going to have to get a toothpick or something and unclog these needle nose. They are, um, they get clogged easily. So if you purchase several of these from me, if you purchase two or more, I usually toss in an extra, um, needle tip for you just in case. they can get pretty. What I really need is a needle that I don't have here. Let's see, where did, uh, everything is moved around in my craft room. I have no idea where everything is. I'm gonna have to grab a new tip. Who else is on tonight? I see some folks out there. Say hi in the chat. I'm going to grab a new tip for my bottle. I'll clean this one up later. Actually, I'll just have to use a regular glue bottle because we are rearranging. We're changing the inventory into the studio room, studio room into the inventory. There we go. And everything is out of place <laughs> and I can't find my bottles, but that's okay. Hey, Terry from the Philippines. Good to see you. So we are going live on Facebook and on YouTube simulcasting. So we're live in the Paper Bead Fanatics Facebook group and on YouTube. So some of you will not may not see comments. I'm not sure if you can all see each other's comments or not. If you're on YouTube, you might only be able to see YouTube comments. I'm not sure how that works. Hello. If you're on Facebook, you have to... Um, there's a little link in the live. You have to give Facebook permission to see your name. Otherwise, I just see Facebook user. Ah, oh, you rolled so many. Now what do you do? Oh, that's a great question. So there are a million things you can do with your beads. You can obviously make jewelry. I think that's what a lot of us do. But you can also make things that are more utilitarian, so to speak. So you can make things like keychains, ornaments, uh, window hangers, uh, you know, things you hang from your, your rear view mirror on your dash. Um, I made wreaths 
if you have a ton of beads, if you have a ton of beads, make a wreath because it takes hundreds of beads to make a wreath. So if you've got that many to get rid of, there's a, there's a couple tutorials. I think there's one wreath tutorial on my channel. And it's got a certain kind of bead, but you can use any kind of bead to make the wreath. I just used a um, foam wreath form and used hot glued the beads to sticks and then stuck the stick in the foam. And it, that wreath is still holding up really well. Oh, Wendy says she makes earrings and combines them with glass beads. Yes, definitely combine your beads with other stuff. There was a necklace posted in Paper Bead Fanatics. I think it was Maggie. Um, and she had used some, I think it was like some wood cutouts with some beautiful brown craft paper beads. Oh my gosh, it was so gorgeous. So elegant. You can also do things like uh, make bowls. Um, I've seen a few tutorials. I haven't done one, but I've seen a few tutorials where people make bowls with their paper beads. Um, I've been wanting to make a yarn bowl with mine. Just haven't gotten around to it yet. And um, I also want to do a lampshade. So there would need to be probably a lot of holes in it. Because, you've, of course, the light's not going to shine through the paper bead. But... You could also do some paper cutouts interspersed with beads and make a really pretty lampshade. So that's hopefully going to be um, a future tutorial. I don't know when. I've got a couple planned. That's not one of the ones I have planned, but um, I think a lampshade would be beautiful. What other ideas do you guys have for what you can make with paper beads? You can make um, art projects too. So you know what quill, I don't know if you know what quilling is. If you don't, you should look it up. It's similar to beading, but different techniques, slightly different tools. You can use the paper bead rollers for some quilling, um, but not all of it. But um, you can kind of do what they do with quilling. You could take like a shadow box frame and make a piece of artwork with your beads. That would be a lot of fun. So many things you can do. It's crazy. Yes, yeah, so I am just rolling. That's right, recycling magazine papers. Um, food boxes. I like making beads with food boxes. I like thicker beads generally. So cutting up food boxes. Hey, Sherry. How you doing? Yes, paper punches to make earrings and pendants to use with your beads. That's right. I've seen a bunch of stuff you've posted. It's gorgeous stuff. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. So I have made so far, before I decided to go live, I've made this many. I have not glazed, obviously. They're unglazed. This is with the new April showers pattern. I got barrel beads. I've got beads that are, this is one sheet of paper. Um, this is two sheets, I believe two strips together. And then I think this one is three strips together. So that's what I've done so far. And here's a different paper. Manila envelopes make strange beads. Yeah, and you know what? I saw somebody post a picture in Paper Bee Fanatics of a security envelope that they used. And the inside of the security envelope had like a really cool pattern on it. And those beads were awesome. You can, you can make, you can use any kind of paper with paper beads, really such a variety and and it's so nice to be able to use um like recycle reuse things that would go to waste or sit in the landfill or decompose and we're making beautiful things out of them i think that's awesome oh when do you do quilling too i did a little i tried quilling um i did a little bit of it 
there's some amazing pieces of art that people make uh, with quill, with quilling. I'm just so impressed. There's been a lot of questions about glaze lately too, what people dip with and glaze with. What do you guys use to glaze your beads? Or first, tell me if you dip or if you um, brush. Both are fine. They're both, both of them work really well. It's just really, I think, a personal preference. And then what do you use? I was thinking about doing this video. <clears throat> Somebody, oh, I can't remember now the name. I'd have to go look it up. Someone posted in the group about a different kind of um, wood hardener that she had found. So a lot of people use PC Petrifier when they dip. That's just that's just for dipping. You don't brush with it. Um, but they dip the, the paper into it multiple times and it hardens the paper. It's really not meant for paper. It's meant for like actual wood. But paper is a wood product, so it works. And... Um, Ah, Wendy, you have a t-shirt that catches your, um, she says that she rolls her beads while watching TV and you have a t-shirt that catches the glue drips nicely. Do you wear the t-shirt or is the t-shirt something that you put on your uh, lap? I'm just curious about, I got to know about this. Here's our confetti hearts paper. One of my favorite, they're all my favorite. Who am I kidding? Um, Oh, I think the other end is actually the, the one I should start with. That's funny. Um, oh, what was I saying now? Now I forget. Oh, I was saying, tell me if you dip or brush. And um, hey, Cheryl, and what you use. So, so somebody had posted a different kind of wood hardener, and there were some questions about whether or not it was safe to use. Because anytime you're using chemicals, you've got to pay attention um, to if that chemical is safe to wear against the skin. So they were very legit questions, but, um, and I need to do a, a quick little video on this. So any chemical that is sold in the United States, Hey Candy, how you doing girl? Any chemical sold in the United States anyway, um, has what's called an, a material safety data sheet, MSDS. And, it's public knowledge. So you should be able to Google and find the MSDS sheet for any product that is sold in the U S and what it is, is it is a, it is a legal government document, I guess you would call it, but um, they're required to test products prior to putting them out on the market. And um, they have to document the testing. It has to be done by like a certified lab. Um, and if, and it will tell you if something is considered hazardous or not hazardous. Now, some things are considered somewhat hazardous in their liquid form. So for example, on, on the wood hardener, the MSDS has things like if it gets in your eyes, what do you do? If you swallow it, call the poison control center, et cetera, et cetera. But it is, um, classified as a non-hazardous chemical, which means that you shouldn't have any problem with, um, it being next to your skin in its dry form. So that's something you've got to pay attention to when you're deciding what you're going to glaze with. Um, Sherry brushes, a couple coats of Vibrance, a couple coats of polycrylic. Oh, that's a great idea. Emptied a nail polish bottle and filled it with polycrylic. And you never need to worry about a drying brush. That is a great idea. Louise uses the um, heat gun and the... Um, Oh, I just had the name of it. Embossing powder. It's the embossing powder. See, it's not just your old age. <laughs> it's pandemic memory loss. That's what I call it. <laughs> yeah, that's a great tip with the nail polish. Absolutely. Good idea. <laughs> I 
don't know how many brushes I've lost. Tons. I would probably need a bigger nail polish bottle though. You wear the t-shirt. Wendy wears that t-shirt. That is awesome, Wendy. I need to do that. I tend to get it on my jeans. <laughs> it's not my shirt so much as my jeans. Probably because of the way I sit on the couch. I sit sideways. Ah, oh, Wendy, that's a good one, too. You got a lot of good ones for us tonight. So Wendy says she works for Hobby Lobby. And if other departments come across interesting packing paper, so like when products and stuff come into the store, they bring it to you and ask if you can use it. That's pretty cool because they don't like to throw it all away, right? Very smart. Very smart. Candy does two, two dips of PC and two dips of Vibrant. And she wears an apron when you, you see you guys, why am I not doing all of this? I am behind the ball, behind the ball. Nan asked if I can find some empty nail polish bottles and have them in my store. I probably could. Yeah. I'll write that down. See if I can't um, find that. I probably, I might want to find bigger than nail polish bottles though. I wonder if I can find something a little larger. It would be like almost like, if you think of industrial size, I don't know if they even have this, but like an industrial size nail polish bottle, that's what I would need. But not like, you remember the old rubber glue that we used to use in elementary school? Not that big with the brush built in. Remember that? Maybe not that big, but just a little bigger. Wendy uses UV resin. Yep, somebody asked about that today too. Oh, Louise rolls the beads on paper clips. That will make a really tiny hole for sure. I sell bead rollers, so I roll on my bead rollers that I sell right there. Ooh. All right. We're getting there. Oh, I need to show you guys. Um, well, I'll show it to you later. I'll show it to you in a few minutes. I got to look something up first. All right, we're going to do, let's see, I need to find a second strip. I want to do two strips of this, but I got to find the other strip. Where is it? I have a huge pile of strips right here that I'm trying to work with. Oh, that one's too small. No, I don't have any more. Oh, here, no, that's not it. Huh. I was going to double this up, but I can't find another one that size. Mm, there we go. This one will work. <laughs> Wendy has a uh, resin drips on her recliner. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I have a uh, diamond glaze on my couch, but we are looking for a new couch. So our couch between me and my husband, he, is a drag racer. He, he drag races cars and his side of the couch is filthy because he goes, works on cars and he doesn't think about it. And he sits on the couch without like when he comes in the door and he doesn't change his clothes first. And I cannot get it off. I even have used a, um, like a steam cleaner. Can't get it off, but we need a bigger couch anyway. <gasps> oh, look at this. Hey, Donna, how are you doing? They tell, they tell customers she makes pretty out of trash. Oh, I love that. I gotta use that. Make pretty out of trash. That is awesome. Donna does PC petrifier. Is that all you do, Donna? You don't coat it over with anything else? Which is fine. I know a lot of people do that. I was just curious. <laughs> Candy lost an expensive pair of Harley jeans. Yeah. Let's see if I can find another one of this. There we go. 
This guys is the April showers paper, which if you, if you are a member of the pattern paper subscription, you got yours already, but if you're not, it is now available in the store at paperbeadrollers.com. So it's on the 15th, the newest, the month's paper goes out that you can purchase in single sheets or 10 packs. So it is out there. I put it out a little early. It's technically the 14th, but it just went up. Resolve rug cleaner. Uh, you know, not on, not on the grease. I've tried, I've tried a couple other rug cleaners on that grease and it hasn't worked. But you know what I was going to try next? They say that Dawn dish soap removes grease very well. So I was thinking of trying to mix the Dawn in my machine. I have like, a, I think it's a thistle, but I don't want to, you know, they say only use the stuff that comes with it. Oh, that's a little crooked, but it's all right. Um, only use the kind, you know, the, but I think it's okay. I don't think the machine's going to know the difference between Dawn, unless I put too much in and it like suds up really bad. <laughs> We could have a disaster on our hands if we do that. Maybe I should film it. <laughs> I don't know if you guys know, but I actually started another YouTube channel. It's called The Drag Racer's Wife. And I, I don't cross over too much. Like, I don't talk about paper beads on that one. And I don't really talk about that one on this. But just in case you want to, just because I was going there. Um, but I film totally different types of videos on there. And it's it's just because my husband has a drag racing YouTube channel. And I'm at, I go to races most weekends in the season. And I just thought, well, as long as I'm at the race, I'm selling t-shirts, I might as well do some filming and have another channel. So I just started it. It's harder than it looks. I mean, it takes me a long time to do these videos. I probably, most of my tutorials, I probably spend, um, sometimes I'll spend 10 hours on one video that I make for you guys. That's a, it's a lot. Isn't they don't always take that long? But, um, you know, designing the piece and filming it and then editing it and voicing it over. I mean, it's it's a lot to do a full tutorial. So um, I thought these would be easier, but they're not. They're really not. But if you want to check it out, it's called The Drag Racer's Wife uh, YouTube channel. That Dawn Spray. I have that Dawn Spray. Maybe I could do that instead of putting the Dawn in the machine. Maybe what I could do is spray the Dawn spray right on the couch, let it soak for a little bit and try to break down that grease and then just suck it up with the machine. That's what I'm going to try. That's a great suggestion, Nan. Because I have it. It's apple scented. <laughs> the couch will smell like apples. Let's see. Candy says hydrogen peroxide and water in a spray bottle and spray it. Then take a dish of water and Dawn and OxyClean. I've got OxyClean and scrub it and scrub it and then rub with clean water. So hydrogen peroxide and water in a spray bottle and then water and Dawn and OxyClean. Okay. I might have to ping you for that. I guess I can come back in the video and look. Wendy says, awesome cleaner at Dollar Tree. Okay. There's a bunch of stuff to try. The problem is as soon as I get it clean, he's going to do it again. Because, <laughs> you know, men. Watch. He's probably watching this. He's going to be like, you were talking about me. You were bad mouthing me on your live. Sorry, honey. Have you ever like looked at a strip and you weren't sure which side was smaller? I do that. So I always have to double check it's that side. So what else is going on with you guys? Is everything pretty much back to normal? Your boyfriend is a machinist, so you can relate, right? Yeah, he gets greasy too. Hydrogen peroxide may fade the fabric. Yeah, I might try it in a spot. Now it is like a white. Well, it's kind of like an off. Well, now it's not white anymore, but it's like an off white. It's a tan. I never should have gotten it, but it's like a like a yeah, I guess like a cream, like an off white. But I mean, it's already it's already filthy, so 
probably won't matter if it fades the fabric. We're going to probably buy a new one anyway. We want a sectional, like a dark brown one. <laughs> Candy's waiting for spring. I'll tell you what, spring keeps teasing me here in North Carolina, right, Donna? Um, we get 70 degree weather and then it goes down to like, you know, 20, 30. I'm like, wait a minute. That was supposed to be, let's see, that's got pink and yellow this sides. I'm going to do the one that has more yellow. We'll do that side. Um, yeah, the daffodils are already faded. They bloomed and have faded already. And the um, crabapple trees and the dogwoods are blooming. And the pear trees are blooming. And the, the horrible, in North Carolina, we get the horrible pollen where it puts like this powdery green coating on everything for like three weeks. I do not have allergies, but my son and my husband do. And they are miserable the whole time. Oh, Nan. Oh, yes. I did see your question about that. I need, I'm sorry. I haven't answered it yet. So I know the brother scan and cut can cut metal, but when I say metal, it's gotta be like super thin, like really thin tin. Um, so like there's, I don't even know where you get it. Um, but it can just, it can do the really thin stuff. But I think you have to have like the deep cut blade. You can't do it with a regular blade. I don't know if the other machines can do it or not. And the scan and cut can engrave too. I have the, I actually have the tool for engraving and I've never used it. I've just, you know, I'm so busy that I just, I never get to just play anymore. Cheryl, that's a good idea. Or scotch guard. I don't think we scotch guarded it. Are the metal edges sharp? I've not done it, Nan. Um, so I don't know exactly how it comes out. So you might have to Google it or look on YouTube. Because um, I've not actually done it. Surprisingly, so my dad did an experiment for me. Um, it's his idea, not mine. But he actually took tin cans, like Coke cans and made paper beads out of them. And he said that the edges were not sharp. He cut it with um, tin snips. Oh, Wendy, you're in Hendersonville. That's not that far from me. I'm over here kind of on the corner, like right outside of Raleigh. And Donna, I believe, is at the beach somewhere. I'll let her say if she wants to say where she lives, but. Let's see, do we want the purple side or the, I think we'll do the multicolor side at the end. I know it is so bipolar. I mean, it's crazy. And then like a couple months out of the year, my heating bill is through the roof. I got like a $450 heating bill this last time. And normally, I mean, I can get away during a lot of the year with like under $200 heating bills. And just because the weather has been so extreme, we're turning it from heat to air conditioning constantly. And it'll probably be like that for another couple weeks, too. The spotter lantern fly arrived here in York, Pennsylvania last summer. Not looking forward to their eggs hatching in the spring. It, what is that? Is it a butterfly? Or is it some sort of a, I don't know what that is. I'll have to look it up. Lantern fly. I'm assuming it's sort of like a, it could be like a cicada type bug. Because those, have you ever, if you've ever lived in an area where cicadas are, oh my gosh, they are creepy. Like when they come crawling out of the ground, there's tons of them, like thousands of them, and they are just the creepiest looking things in the world. Well, it, it's like invasion of the insects.
Okay. Invasive bug from Asia. Oof. Yeah, there's been a lot out about that spider too, that there's a um, invasive spider, or I guess it's just really big maybe. It's like a huge spider. But supposedly it, it is venomous, but it's not, um, it's so small that it couldn't actually hurt you. I started reading about that and I was like, ooh, because I'm not a spider kind of girl. Not a spider girl. But they said it's not, it's actually harmless in terms of human beings. So that's good. So what do you guys think of this camera, this new camera? I think I like it. It has a much better resolution up close. I've been looking, I've, I've tried probably three or four different cameras to get some close-ups that were clear. And I think this one is a winner. Donnie, had snow Saturday. We missed that over here. Where did I get the wallpaper books from? So I stopped in at Sherwin Williams um, in my town and they apparently had not cleaned it out for a while. She said somebody was supposed to have done it a couple months ago, but apparently they didn't. Um, so I need to figure out what to do with that wallpaper. I was, tr I was wondering if I cut it out and like sold it in like grab bag packs. Is that something you guys would be interested in? And I wouldn't sell it. I mean, I got it for free. So it would just be the um, time to cut it out. I'll probably um, have Kate do it. Kate might be coming back to work for me, you guys. I think she's she's thinking about moving back and because she missed me. And um, but she's been coming up for weekends because she moved like it's like an hour and 20 minutes away. So it's not too far. So she was up this past weekend. But I could get her to cut the books out. So I would just, it would just be nominal, just enough to cover her time. But if you guys would be interested in having like grab bags of the wallpaper, I could do something like that. Because there's so much of it, so much of it. Thanks, Candy. Thanks, Nan. Yeah, I think this camera is, um, is a winner. I think I'm going to keep it. Oh, gift boxes would be good. And they would be good, too, for the um, Sherry's uh, cutout pendants, Sherry, that you were talking about earlier. The wallpaper is perfect for that because they're nice and thick. You could um, glue them to cardboard. That is a great use for it, I think. Somewhere around here, I have a circle cutter. Because I can run the wallpaper through the um, rather scan and cut, too, and cut circles and stuff that way. Oh, cool, Wendy. I'll make sure I go if my mom doesn't get to it first. My mom is one of the other moderators. She's awesome. She does so much for me. Um, if she doesn't get to you first, I'll let you in when we're done off the live. So many talented people and paper bead fanatics on Facebook. Oh, my gosh. I mean, just blown away and humbled by all of the beautiful things that get posted in that group. Some of it is just like I would have never thought of that. And it's so beautiful. Can't believe what people come up with. It's amazing. Donna's out by the Outer Banks of North Carolina. I hope we're done with snow, Donna, because, you know, it's time for a little beach. What do you think? Time for some beach time. And my swimming pool in my neighborhood. Waiting for that to open back up. ATCs. Wendy, what are ATCs? Louise said her daughters live in Buffalo. Yeah, up in Buffalo, they're going to get like a ton of lake effect snow. 
I used to live in um, Ohio a long time ago. And in Ohio, you got lake effect from Lake Erie, like where I lived. So I would be driving. I lived at my parents and I was going to college and um, I'd be driving to college. And all of a sudden, you know, there, well, there would be like two feet of two or three feet of snow. And then you'd hit this like line in the snow where it, the, the level of snow dropped by a foot. And that was where the lake effect stopped in a straight line. It was so, it was so crazy. But back in those days, we had snow on the ground. Like it would snow in end of October, November. I remember it would snow sometimes trick or treating. And you would never, um, you wouldn't even see the grass until March or April. I mean, it, but it's not like that anymore. They've uh, warmed up quite a bit up there. They still get way more snow than we do, but they don't get it like for the whole winter. It's here and there. Oh, I'm a little crooked on that one. Let's fix that. Because I'm talking instead of paying attention. I need my glasses on. There we go. I know you can't see that, but um, do they even have wallpaper sample books anymore? Well, you know, I was kind of wondering that when I stopped by there, but I was there uh, in the plaza to pick up some food. And I've always thought about running in there and asking. Because it's, you know, you always hear people talk about it. And I'm like, yeah, I don't know. Um, so I run in and sure enough, they have two whole bookshelves of them. And she said that she expects at some point they are going to stop doing it. But probably not anytime soon. Because honestly, you know, it's hard to pick a wallpaper that you can't touch and feel. Now, like Lowe's and Home Depot, they don't really have wallpaper samples anymore um, that I could see when I go there anyway. So, um, you know, I think some people have done away with them, but Sherwin-Williams still had them. Oh, artist trading cards. Oh, interesting. Neat. I need music. <laughs> so what do you guys do when you roll beats? So do you watch TV? Do you ride in the car? Do you? I listen to audiobooks a lot when I'm rolling. I used to watch TV, but I don't watch it as much anymore. Although there have been a couple good shows lately that I've really gotten into. If you like... Um, shows my age, I suppose, but Steve Martin and Martin Short. Totally love those two. They have a show. I think it's on Netflix. It's called Only Murders in the Building. And it's like a mystery. Uh, it is so good. And they they are doing a season two. Their season one is out there now. And I, I don't know if they've already filmed. I think they've already filmed season two. Um, but it's a really good show. So that's, that's one to watch. Another one I've been watching is this show called Ghosts. Yeah, I know a lot of my things have to do with death, apparently. Um, but it's like a comedy. Candy listens to audiobooks and music. Um, Ghosts is a comedy. I think it's on CBS, but it's also, you can stream it on the CBS uh, website. So I've been streaming it. I'm not disciplined enough to watch regular TV anymore. Plus, we don't have regular uh, cable well, we have like a streaming version of it, but. Yeah, I've been into audiobooks ever since I realized, and you know, I don't know if you guys realize this, but libraries now, a lot of libraries um, use an app. There's like a Libby, and I think there's a couple other apps. Um, where you can actually check out audiobooks for free. And it's just like listening to them on a Kindle, but it's free. So 
I think my library only has, they only have like 400 books. And of those 400, you know, there's only been like 30 that I was really interested in listening to. And I've already listened to them all, but they need to get more. Um, but I was really pleased that um, I could get those audiobooks for free from my library right on my phone. So I've been doing that a lot and Kindle Unlimited. Hmm. All right, I'll do this end over here. <laughs> Wendy watches TV. <laughs> I know, because really, because then you got to look up, right? To see what's going on. I mean, you don't always have to see. You can listen, but you got to be able to look. That's funny. The glue drip t-shirt. You know what? I should overdrive Libby and Hoopla are the, the different apps. What is Hoopla? Is it a library app or is it another lap, another app that does audiobooks? So I've been designing um, t-shirts for my husband because, you know, drag racers, they have t-shirts. We sell t-shirts when we go to the track. And um, it just occurred to me. I should do a Wendy inspired shirt that I can sell. That's like um, the drip shirt, right? The paper beading drip shirt. So it'll be a cheap shirt with some kind of, oh no, it can just say like, uh, I don't know. What would it say? It would have to say something, I guess, on it, but it'd have to be cheap because it would be like a shirt specifically to wear to get messy while you're paper beading. We could, have, we could call it the drip shirt. <laughs> Wendy listens to Enigma. They're very soothing. Oh, roll that one a little tight. There you go. Let's see. Let me do this one. You can see all my, um, the cat knocked off my box of strips off the cabinet. And some of the strips got a little crushed. But that's the beauty of paper beading is it doesn't matter. They don't have to be perfect because, oh, the t-shirt could say, I'm on a roll. <laughs> that's awesome. Hey, let me flip. Let's see if I can flip to Facebook and see who that is. Who just posted here? I'll ask, just ask you who just posted about the phone. Um, the phone being full. Tell me your name. Cause it just says Facebook user. Tell me who you are. Easter basket colors. You mean this, the April showers paper? It really is. Or you mean just all the beads? Hey, I could fill the bot instead of filling the Easter basket with grass. I could fill it with these. Or better yet, make an Easter basket is probably what you meant. <laughs> How would we do that? How would we make an Easter basket? I guess we could string the beads and then make a wire frame. What's, a, what's an easier way? Somebody tell me, what are your ideas for making an Easter basket? Your favorite t-shirt through Tee Public says Crazy Craft Lady. Hi, I love it. I am definitely one of those.
I could probably make a wire frame, I would think, because I have some aluminum wire that might work really well for that. Maybe that could be a tutorial for Easter. When is Easter this year? I don't even know. I know there's been candy out for like a month in the store. So I lose track of holidays based on the retail calendar. I'm rolling these too tight. My nails are not wanting to, either my nails are getting soft or my roll is getting tight. I'm betting it's the roll. Quill circles and glue them together. Ooh, how about saucer beads? Could do saucer beads. Saucer beads, but maybe you don't take the saucer beads down to a point. So they'd be more like discs. Oh, the bottom of the basket is a CD. That's cute. I have old CDs I could definitely use. Hmm. I might have to put a little tutorial together. Thanks for the ideas and the inspiration, you guys. See, I knew there was a reason I wanted to go live tonight. Nice. My dog is snoring at my feet. I don't know if you can hear him, but he is snoring down there. I swear it's not me. <laughs> well, you know, I'm not asleep. But not that I don't snore. You hung some jewelry off the basket and filled it with candy canes. Oh, that would be such a cute display. Thanks. This is that green waves and circles paper that came out. Uh, when was this? This was January. Yeah, it came out. No, it came out in February for March, for March's paper. All the papers I come out with are a... Um, a month before the holidays so that people have time to make stuff with them. And I figured, you know, green for March, because we think about St. Patrick's Day and getting ready for spring. So I thought it would be a good segue from winter stuff to spring stuff. And then this is for the April showers. And then wait till you see next month's paper. It's my favorite. They're all the new ones are always my favorite. The April showers was really made me happy. But this next one, it's got some very bold colors. Let's just say that. It's not like anything else I've done. A drip shirt with glue dripping out of a glue bottle. That's a great idea. And some paper beads or something. Maybe it could be like this. Like it could be hand holding this. And then like the glue bottle and then like drips. That would be cool. I could draw that. 
in Photoshop probably. I was trying to flip over to um, Paper Bee Fanatics and find the live over here so I could see people commenting, but I don't see it. Why can't I see it? Media, maybe it's in there. No, videos. Ah, I found it. There we go. I found the live. Oh, it's Trudy. Hey, Trudy. Give me a sec, guys. I'm going to try to make this a announcement in the group so that more people see it. I'm still here. Oh, it won't let me do it. Okay, well, that's all right. That's okay. All right. Okay, let's see. What are we going to do next? Um, I think I'm going to do another double. I just got to find the... Thing. And by the way, I actually have something to share with you guys. So I want to show you this, especially now that Trudy's on. This amazing, lovely, awesome pen, which came like weeks ago, and then I didn't get to open it. And then I finally did open it. Trudy made this. I bought it from her. She made a bunch of these for a craft show. And um, hey, Robin, she made a bunch of these for a craft show and she posted them on Facebook. And I was like, I want one. I want one now. I want one now. She's like, wait, I'm not even done. <laughs> so when she got them done, she let me buy one. And I think this is so beautiful. I was using it um, earlier. I was teaching a class and I was using it to mark my notes. And it writes so nice, Trudy. These pens are such a good quality. They're absolutely beautiful. So if you want, um, if I don't know if you have an, an online place where people can buy them or if you're just selling them at um, markets and stuff. But if you are, feel free to put it in the chat where people could get these if you have a place um, because they are super high quality and just gorgeous work. So thank you for making this. It's amazing. Yeah, it writes so smooth. I'm going to find it in one of those. Um, I love it. Let's see. Oh, Candy sent a pic of the paper basket. Okay. In my email or in Facebook? Maybe I can uh, pull it up for people. I don't see it. Isn't that pen gorgeous? Trudy, she is, and she made so many different variations on it. Just, just amazing. So talented. All right. So, so if you go into Paper Bead Fanatics and look up Trudy Solinger, hopefully I'm, I'm saying that correctly. Um, if you want, Trudy, type your name in the chat because the, uh, your name isn't, well, it's not showing up for me. If they're on Facebook, it's showing up, but they're not, it may not be showing up if you're on uh, YouTube or anything. Um, so you can message Trudy if you want one of these pens. They're really gorgeous. I love her work. Oh, there's one that doesn't have the dots. It just has the line. Let's see what that looks like. I feel like sometimes this comes up, these this um, green dots and waves, sometimes it comes out looking like a Funkadelic 70s bead. <laughs> Let's see.
So I have to design the next uh, paper design. Let me ask you guys this. What colors would you like me to design in paper? Like, are there color combinations or um, like, should I do a summary one? Because this will come out. So I've already got the one done that's going to come out on the 1st for, for April. So this will come out, the next one will come out May 1st. So that's the one I'm designing right now. Are there, um, oh, thanks, Robin. Like all the glue pieces that are getting everywhere. What color combinations would you like to see next? Because I'm not sure what to do next. I've done a purple. I've done some pinks. I've done green. Um, the next one's going to have, um, going to actually have a lot of black in it. Black and some other bright colors. You guys just got a little sneak peek. Um, so do you have any thoughts for like what you would like to see? For the May paper. Do you want summer colors? Like, like I could do, I was thinking of doing a pineapple theme at some point, kind of like pineapples and palm tree type thing with lots of yellow and oranges. But I don't know if that's, um, I don't wear orange jewelry. I don't wear orange clothes. So I don't know if that dog is making all kinds of crazy noises. Oh, Robin, you missed the purple. Yes. Oh, and I just put up, I meant to show you guys this. Okay. Let me see. Hold on. Give me a second. I might be able to share my screen. No, not that one. I'm going to share my screen. I can get it to work. Technology. I love technology. Okay. There we go. Share. Okay. Okay. I think you guys can see my screen. I think you can see both. Okay, good. So I just put this up. So I was thinking... Like, what if you only want a couple sheets of, of paper or you want to mix and match? Like, you don't really want 10 of, of one color, but you want like two of one and three of one. So I just created this bundle and you get a little discount because everybody loves discounts. You get a 5% discount. You have to buy 20 sheets, but you can put it any combination you want of any of the papers that I have. So if you want, you know three of the April showers and you don't want any green, you want one hibis or two hibiscus or one heart, you know, or five. So you can do any combination of any patterns as long as it equals 20 sheets. And then once it hits 20, let's just, I'm just going to get, oh, wait, there's green in there twice. Uh oh, I got green in there twice. I'll have to fix that. There you go. Once it hits 20, then, so it's $16.91 for the 20. Um, so you get just a 5% discount. So I don't know. What do you think of that? Would that be cool? I put the link. Let me grab the link. I put the link in the description. But I got to try new things just to see if you guys, you know, if it's something you are you like or that you want. Yellow. Okay. So summer or yellow, green, and maybe orange. Okay. Okay. So yellow, green, and orange would work for you. All right. There's the link. Yeah. So mix and match. So, cause some people will buy just one or two sheets. Um, but I'm like, okay, well we can do a little discount and do a mix and match thing. And then you can try out like all the different ones if you want, or if you already have some, or maybe you have a favorite and you just want more of that and then you want to throw in some other ones just to try. You know, you could get 20 sheets of one color, or one pattern if you want or mix and match however you want. So there you go. We'll see how that goes. I like to try different things and just see what people like and what works for people. 
I need to get the paper up on Amazon. I sell the bead. I sell some of the bead rollers on Amazon, not every size, but I sell some sizes. But um, I need to get the paper on Amazon too. And then you can take advantage of prime shipping. Spring flower colors. I can, Nan. I can absolutely do that. And I was thinking of creating some, I was just, I was just thinking how to do it. So almost like, so some of the people who do digital paper. So if you're in the Paper Bee Fanatics group, you know, we have some amazing members who create digital um, bead templates and they post them for free in the group, which is amazing because they just, they give them away for free. And they're like printed in bead shapes already. Like, so you just have to cut out along the, the colors. But then I was like, but then if I put it, you know, you're stuck with the shape that I've got. So I might still do all over, but yes, have some where the small, um, the small patterns actually show on the beads. That's a great suggestion. And honestly, I'm sort of inspired by that picture I saw of the security envelope. <laughs> it was so pretty. All right, so we have votes for spring flower colors and summer greens and green and yellow type stuff. All right. And Sherry, she says she usually buys um, two, two 12 by 12 of the same pattern. Yeah, that's what I do too. I'll buy, I actually buy three or four, to be honest. When I'm at, like, if I'm at the store and I see some patterns that I like, I usually buy three or four of the same sheet. I don't buy a ton of it um, unless it's something, unless I have a big project in mind for it or I need more. But I buy, uh, usually I buy four. So that, because I use two, at least two, sometimes I need three, and then I've got an extra if I need it. And if I don't use it, it then it can become like scrap paper, but I hear you, girl. Oh, wow. It's almost 11 o'clock here. Tell you what, we're going to give it 10 more minutes and then we're going to head we're going to sign off. Got to get the kid to bed. Hey, Chase. Chase. Bedtime. Later than bedtime. <laughs> Let's see. Um, Robin asks, is there any way to get a template for the beads as you're not able to download and print? So I have stencils. I don't know if that would help you at all. Um, I have like literally they're plastic stencils that you place down on the paper and trace. So I do have three different ones of those. I have them for the Euro, the wide Euro beads, the thin Euro beads, um, and a standard triangle. So if you're not, if you don't like the whole, like, draw the little tick marks and draw the line thing, or if you're looking for the Euro beads, which are, you know, a specific type of bead, um, those stencils, if you go on my website and search stencil, you'll find them. Ooh, man. If you do the tiny designs, you can sell crossovers to dollhouse people. That is a great idea. It can be their wallpaper, right? Because right now what I'm doing is murals for them. <laughs> and they got plenty of that, right? All right. Tell you what, Nan. The one that I designed for May is going to be a tiny design in honor of you and your request. It'll be a tiny design and it will probably, let's see. Well, I'm not going to say what kind of pattern it'll be. I'm not sure. I might need to play around a little and see what I can come up with.
Will you have pre-cut strips in the May design? Yes. So the strips that I have on the website, let me share again. Wait, Wendy, who told you you wasted your money? She said that she bought the uh, paper bead dies like that you run through like the Sizzix and somebody said she wasted her money, but you can place it anywhere you want on the paper and don't have to worry about cutting straight or measuring. Exactly. And that's what the stencils are actually here. I'll show, I can pull a stencil. It's right on the shelf right next to me. So this is the wide Euro bead stencil. Let me do this first and then I'll show you guys. The strips to get back to Nan's question. And the reason they have um, gaps in them is because I try, I tested this where I just cut out the hole all the way and the stencil was not sturdy enough. Like it, it would move um, and it was very frustrating. And so it, my choice was to make the um, material thicker, but then these would have cost more or to just, you know, put little hatch marks in them. So I went with the hatch marks and it seems to work. I haven't had anybody complain yet. Let me find some paper. Um, oh, there's some hibiscus. Let's use that. I just woke up the dog. <laughs> so, Ah, so the Euro bead, let me grab one and I will show you. So this is the Euro bead. It's like the Pandora. It's kind of, this is the, this is the wide one. And then there's a thinner one that I have a stencil for as well. And so you put the little bead cores in and it's like a Pandora bead. So let's use Trudy's pen. And I know you can't see my entire um, piece of paper here, so I'll just do it like this. Where am I? Okay. So with this one, you can just line it up on your paper wherever you want. And then, um, you know, just run the pen down the slots. And so you will have to cut across these little gaps. But like I said, I was trying to keep the price down. If I had to use a super thick, and then there you go. So you would just, you can barely tell the gaps are even there. But this stencil gives you the fat, the wide Euro bead. And then, because it takes three strips together to do the wide Euro bead. There's three on here. And then I have the slim Euro bead and the, um, and standard triangles. So that'll help. But yeah, that's it. Because people are sometimes are like, well, why didn't you just cut them open? You know, make them open. And like I said, the, the, Stencil material is not sturdy enough for that, and I didn't want to have to charge an arm and a leg for these suckers. So that worked out, and then you just cut it with, with scissors. <laughs> Someone who likes to waste their time measuring. <laughs> that told you that you wasted your money on the scissors. Yeah, you know, here's the thing, like, with paper beading or really any kind of crafting. Um, sorry, I'm just wiping off my stencil here. There we go. Um, you know, everybody does it in the way that suits them best, right? Um, this is now my stencil because it's got pen all over it, but everybody is it the way that suits them best. You know, some people like to dip their beads. Some people like to um, brush, you know, like we don't need to, we don't need to, tease each other or, you know, say one's better than the other, they both work perfectly well. Like it's not, it's not camps pitted against each other. We just, you know, there's more than one way to do it. And, and it's perfectly fine that we do it different ways. So, okay, let me share my screen and I will show you the strips with the pattern paper. Where is my, oh yeah, there we go. Where's my share? Share screen. Okay. 
Okay, so this is back to the website. And um, if we go to, so just put your mouse over the shop. Now this is on the laptop, on the phone, you have to, I think, pull it out from the side. But on the laptop, you just go to shop, paper bead, paper strips. And then right now I just have these four styles of strips. I've got the wide Europe, oh, these, I gotta fix those. Um, I got to fix the titles. I didn't realize they were cut off like that. But like if we go into this one, like the barrel beads and you choose. Um, oh, I need to add them. Look at that. I've got blue hibiscus confetti hearts, but I didn't add the other pattern papers. So I will add these and then you can go and order um, the pre-cut strips from the pattern papers. Well, look at that. See, without Kate, I'm lost, you guys. If you don't know who Kate is, Kate is my assistant. Um, she worked for me for, oh gosh, a little over a year. She was on some lives and stuff. Um, so a lot of you know her. She used to sign, she used to pack all the orders and she would sign it, you know, from Kate. Well, she moved away back to where her parents live, which is like an hour and a half, I guess, away. And um, so she's been gone. She used to come up for a couple weekends to help me like make bead rollers and stuff. But um, she told me this weekend she's thinking of moving back. And I'm so excited because I miss my Kate. And I just, I haven't hired anyone to replace her. I have a neighbor who comes and helps me, Debbie, who's awesome. But um, yeah, I really miss my Kate. So I'm going to have, I think, both of them helping me. Kate will be coming during the week and Debbie will come uh, on weekends to help me with inventory and shipping and all that good stuff. Oh, you're welcome, Wendy. Yeah, the Eurobeat is, um, it's a fun one. I don't know if I have the thin one on my board. Yes, I do. Hold on, I'll grab the thin one and show you what that looks like too. Let me grab it off the board behind me. All right, this is the original Euro bead that I made, the much thinner one. And then um, here's another, here's more Euro beads. These are made with a slightly thicker paper. I actually think they look better this way. Um, and it's a, it's a really pretty patterned paper. So that's the wide one that you just saw me trace. And then this is the original one, which is the thin one or the narrow one. Yeah, I hear you, Wendy. Well, and um, I honestly, I don't cut many strips at all. Like I just, I do, I cut all my strips with my Cricut or my brother scan and cut because I just can't. My back, now my back is much better. I had surgery last summer and it fixed the problems that I was having, but um, I still struggle with, with sitting and cutting strips. So will I be making more stencils? I don't know. Do you want me to? Um, I could, I tried, I was trying to make a round stencil, but it just, I could not get it to come out right. Rounds are so tricky. And I tried translating my SVG that I have that's around into the stencil and it just, even I couldn't get it to work right. So I won't be doing a round stencil, but, uh, let me know what other stencils you want. What do you want? What other shapes would you like as a stencil? I could certainly do more. Lots of people like them. Chase. All right, guys, it is 11 o'clock. I got to go um, get the kid moving here because he should have been in bed like an hour ago but I lost track of time because I was talking to you guys. So here's all the beads I made tonight. Yay. So yes, I, I will think about maybe doing some kind of an Easter basket with these. That's a great idea. So like a double bead stencil. Hey, there's my husband. <laughs> hey, Turbo John. 
Night, Trudy. Um, you guys have a wonderful night. Have a wonderful week ahead. You know, it's only Monday. We got a whole week going on. Um, you guys have an absolutely wonderful week. And um, I will talk to you soon again. All right. Okay. See you soon, baby. <laughs> I love when he pops on my lives. <laughs> All right. It was wonderful seeing you guys and talking to you again. We'll see you again soon. Bye.